On June 8, 1867, in the rural farming community of Richland Center, Wisconsin, Frank Lincoln Wright was born. The child of teachers and subjected to strong religious influences, Frank was encouraged from an early age to embrace his love of creation and design. At the age of 14, after his parents divorced, his middle name was changed to Lloyd in honor of his mother's Welsh family roots. So came to be Frank Lloyd Wright. Today, a name synonymous with innovative design and inspired architecture. The year was 1886, and young Wright enrolled at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. However, after only two semesters, he left school and moved to Chicago. There, he landed his first job as a draftsman. This is where his transformative journey through the world of architecture would begin. His career continually evolving and his influence steadily growing, by the early 1900s, Wright was credited with being the father of the prairie home style of architecture. The prairie style embraced building homes to complement the natural prairie settings surrounding Chicago, the predominant area Wright designed for at that time. By the mid-1930s, Wright had evolved his style into what he referred to as Usonian design. Short for United States of North America, Usonian influenced homes are generally characterized by several common traits including the innovative use of materials, an absence of basements and attics, flat roofs, small kitchens, baths and bedrooms, large common areas, and two continuing themes found throughout Wright's career, a fireplace as the central focus of the home's interior, and an exterior which complements and integrates with the home's natural surroundings. The year is now 1950. And although well into his 80s, Frank Lloyd Wright is at the peak of his profession. In a career that has included designing over 1,000 projects and the realization of nearly 500 of them, demand for his services have never been higher. It is at this time a young couple from West Lafayette, Indiana, requests he design their new home. A long shot for sure, but after several calls, telegrams, and meetings, the great architect relents and so begins work on what will become the architectural treasure known as Samara.